What's going on, Tiger Nation? Y'all know who it is. This is your main man, Ken Clark. Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, KC 1400 Media. Back down in the Big Easy with Son of the City, man. Down here at the HBCU Legacy Bowl. Got DJ Stevens sitting down with us. DJ, man, got through the whole week, bro. I'm going to let you open us up. Tiger Nation, let us know how your week went, man. Uh, first of all, I want to just thank Tiger Nation for the support. You know, we've been seeing all the support on social media throughout the whole week. And then when Ken and the whole media team got here yesterday, you know, that was just big for us just seeing them, knowing that we had that support system down here with us. And, you know, we just down here, out here, trying to represent Jackson State to the fullest, you know. Out here going hard, a great opportunity up front for us, and we're just trying to make the most of it. So you were one of three uh, uh, Jack State Tigers, man, that um, got invited to the HBCU Combine. So let's start with the Combine, and then we'll expand throughout the week, and then we can talk about how practice went. But uh, let's start with, first of all, kind of how you felt knowing that you were, because I know when we were at the, at, the, at the school, you let me know, you, it's like, hey, I'm going to get down for the Combine. So talk about how it felt to get that call and get that invitation, knowing that you were going to be a part of a unique opportunity with an HBCU combine knowing it was going to be all NFL scouts coming down to look at your talent? Well, you know, it was a uh, big opportunity when they sent me the invite, you know, it was, it was a blessing. And I just knew I had to, I was already training. So I just knew that was even more motivation for me to prepare and get ready for that combine, you know, with 31, I think they said 31 out of 32 teams of uh, scouts being there and growing up, the Saints, that's they, my favorite team. So, the combine being held at the Saints practice field, it just was a dream come true for me. So, you know, I just went out there and left it, left it all on the field. So, you know, I feel like I had a pretty good day. It definitely was uh, something to build off of for getting ready for pro day next month. Okay. And it just was, uh, like I said, a dream come true. Just trying to make the most of this opportunity and just going to keep on working. There it is. So, usually, man, when you go into something like a combine you never really done that before you kind of get it's kind of like a one-stop shop you know one shot opportunity and then it's like what were your expectations kind of going in because you know when you're going in blind you don't really know what to expect but what were your expectations going into the combine as opposed to what you actually did and how you felt about the overall experience once you got a chance to do it well you know um the main thing for me was the 40 time and then we didn't actually do the 225 bench test, but that's something I've been working really hard at. Okay. But the 40, you know, since the season end, I've just been trying to focus on my technique and stuff, because a lot of people don't know the 40 time, you think you just get down and run, but it's more than that. It's actually, you know, your start and your technique, that plays a big part of your time. So, you know, me and Deontay, we've been training together since the beginning of January, the end of December. And we just been working real hard on, you know, 40, 225, broad jump, all those uh, drills. And like I said, just going to the combine and getting that, you know, that measuring stick, seeing where I'm at, yeah. seeing, you know, where the scouts look at me at and where I need to improve at, stuff like that. And I just, you know, I'm grateful for that opportunity. And like I said, I'm, the combine that happened, now I can go back, you know, look, look at my numbers, look where I need to be for this next month, and, you know, that's going to alter my preparation for these next couple of weeks getting ready for pro day. Okay. So 31 out of 32 teams, did they have a uh, – because I, I really wanted to get down there. I was disappointed. I did reach out to try to get down, and it didn't just didn't happen this year. We'll get that next year. But um, talk about the – I guess the meeting aspect of it. Did you get a chance to speak with any particular teams or – how did that work? Um, the way it was set up, you know, at the end of uh, every night, you know, they have each, each team had their own section. You know, they kind of just called up certain players that they wanted to, you know, ask a few questions with, get to kind of get to know us and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, um, it was a lot of scouts, like you said. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it looked like at least 100 to me. When I'm, I'm getting ready to run my 40, I look down there, I see – 50 scouts on this side, 50 scouts on that side. So, you know, uh, after we got done with the drills, you know, I went up to um, probably not every scout, but any scout that I seen, I just went up, introduced myself, thanked them for coming out, thanked them for this opportunity. 
this a once in a lifetime opportunity. So, you know, I just tried to make the most of it. So I looked at the actual chart and we'll finish up a few more questions about the combine. Then we'll talk about the week of preparation and then some Jackson State stuff. But looking at the chart, I think it was only what? How many tight ends was it? Was it like four tight ends? So, so you think about that. You got four tight ends. Um, you played, I mean, in, in the HBCU Combine, basically, the HBCU Legacy Bowl covers the four primary HBCU conferences with the SIAC, the CIAA, and then, of course, your two Division I uh, HBCU conferences. Did that make you feel like you had done enough? Was that kind of like a climactic aspect of your career, playing at Jackson State, knowing that you were one of the few four that was in that number? Of course, we were happy to see you, but kind of how did that feel? I know you was in there with... Uh, Kamari Young with Fam U. We had a chance to talk to him for a brief second, but um, how did that make you feel being a, in such a small group? Man, it was such an honor. You know, uh, they just told us last year they only had one tight end here. Wow. So the fact that they was even able to invite four of us, you know, that's big for the tight end position group uh, in the HBCU. Cause I feel like the uh, tight end position group in the HBCU kind of like slept on. So, you know, that's kind of one thing me and the other tight ends that's here, you know, we're just trying to just prove, you know, HBCU tight ends, we can play football too. So, and just being able to be here with those four, uh, those other three guys, you know, the one from Howard, uh, Brendan Brown, and like you said, Kamari Young from FAMU, and Tristan Ballard from UAPB, and just, you know, seeing them, how they work, and then working with them together, it's just been a good week, and I just feel like we kind of, you know, put more respect on the tight end name in the HBCU community. I like that. I like that. So moving on from the combine, you get into the actual, now everybody's here. You know, everybody pops up, everybody shows up into New Orleans and um, you guys had, I look like you guys got greeted by the, the New Orleans, shout out to the New Orleans alumni chapter, man, for pulling up uh, with the, uh, with some, uh, some, some take homes, man. And um, we, we love, we love our Tigers. You guys know that, man, but it's a, uh, Talk about how that made you feel when you got in the city and how you were greeted by the love of those Tigers that was down here in the New Orleans area. Man, anytime I see y'all, I instantly feel like I'm just at home. Like, I know we in New Orleans, but it don't even feel like it no more. It feel like we Jackson, Louisiana or something like that. <laughs> so, like I said, whenever I see y'all, whenever I see y'all, whenever, not just me, just all these players, we just know we see y'all. We got that support system. We know y'all got our back and we appreciate that. And we just forever grateful for that. Absolutely. So what were your expectations of HBCU Legacy Bowl? Like the practices and preparations. Now you leave Coach Taylor and, and Coach Otis, uh, who's your tight end coach. And you go into a room with a whole bunch of new coaching staff and just kind of, a, you're on a regimented week. Uh, talk about what your expectations were for the HBCU Legacy Bowl experience. And what did you get from it? Like your overall expectations? Did it meet expectations? Did it exceed it? Was it more that you thought would have happened that probably didn't happen? Talk about that a little bit. Um, I think I really, everything I expected kind of, if anything, it was probably more than what I expected, you know. Uh, as far as the coaching, I knew we had some good coaches from the SWAC and the SIAC, you know, all the conferences that you name. I knew we were going to have some pretty good coaches coaching us and uh, this is my first all-star game playing for football in my career, so I didn't kind of know what to expect as far as like how it would be learning the plays and stuff like that. But you know, once we came in Monday night, we had a mean walkthrough. Once I seen the playbook, you know, it wasn't going to be too complex. We only got a week, so you know, once we got through all that, got through the first day of practice Tuesday, kind of, you know, once you get the little jitters and stuff out of your first day, you know how the first day go. So once you go out here and just see, you know, we're just playing football. It's just like we had the vet with or something. That's what's up. So listen, you guys, man, I know we, you know, we got five down here, but you guys get a treat uh, at, during the game, man. You guys get to hear the sonic boom at half. Well, I mean, you guys usually don't get to see the halftime show. We, we, we usually get to see that. But uh, how does that make you feel knowing that, your, you know, your home band is going to be down here putting on the show? Especially after coming out the Super Bowl right, uh, right. showing with, with Usher. Hey, we've been talking trash to all the other players all week. We're like, hey, look, you know, the fan you boy, y'all might have got the Celebration Bowl and all that, but look, we at the Legacy Bowl now. And I told them, I said, who band going to be performing at halftime? The Boom. 
Now I said, who been performing? When you look at when you watching the Super Bowl, you look up and see who performing. The boom. So, you know, I always like bragging on my school and you know the Sunny Boone, they always gonna give us something to brag about. So them coming down here, that's definitely big. Like I said, that support system, it just that's all the little things they build up to, you know, that's extra motivation for us to even go out there and go harder. So we definitely excited that the boom down that gonna be down here this weekend. Absolutely. A couple more questions. We'll get uh, let you get back to your regular scheduled events, man. Um, playing at Jackson State, man, you had a, a really interesting career. We talked about it a lot on Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. When you look back over your your college career, man, anything you regret? Do you do you, you know you had an opportunity to potentially spread your wings a little bit? You could have hit the portal. You could have done a lot of things, man. How do you feel about the culmination of your time spent at Jackson State playing football for the Tigers? Uh, as far as, like you said, is there anything I regret? I'm going to say no, because I feel like everything I went through, it just made me a better person at the end of the day. And that's including the down and up time. So, you know, it just, like I said, it just helped build me to the person I am today. So I, there's not nothing. I, if I went back, I'd do everything the same. The only thing I would say is, it ain't a regret, but you know, going to the celebration bowl twice. Yeah, I, I wanted you to say that. And not getting that <laughs> ring. That's probably about, that's the only thing in my career that I'm missing. That celebration bowl ring. But you know, hey, just making it there. That was a dream. Growing up in high school and, and watching that celebration bowl. You know, I think it got started in like 2015. Yeah, and ever since it got started, I'm, I'm just like, I can't wait to the day that Jack State be there. And you know, we get to take over Atlanta. So being able to grow up and play in that game and even score a touchdown in that uh, 2022 game, you know, that's just memories I'm going to forever live with. I'm blessed to be able to have experienced it. Absolutely, man. All right, you know, we, we always do this, man, even on Tiger Talk. Um, this is your moment, you know, to kind of speak to, I want you to speak to two this time. We always say leave a message for Tiger Nation. You said last year there was one tight end here. This year they got four. You leave some tight ends, some, some little brothers over at the, at the 1400 J.I. Lynch. I want you to leave a message for them because you, you, you got a brother over there by the name of Jensen Riley. And he, he, he swear he like that now. We, but he, he got some big shoes to fill, man. We, we, gonna, we definitely gonna miss you uh, when it comes to that. But um, talk to your, to your tight end group and then a message to Tiger Nation, and we'll go from there. Uh, I just want to say first to the tight end group, you know, first shout out to the OG, Richie, Colin Richie, Rob Washington, Kobe Gates, all them boys. They taught me everything I knew. I came in, you know, freshman, true freshman. I only had two years of football under my belt, so, you know, I was low on experience. They took me up on their wing, and I just feel like I did the same thing with y'all. You know, y'all watched me last year. Jensi, you watched me the past couple years. And I know, I know what y'all can do. Y'all, at the, at the ages they at right now, they already more advanced than me. So just keep working hard, you know. It's gonna be up and down times. Like, you just gotta keep working hard, keep your faith in God, and just, you know, trust your coaches. And just, at the end of the day, what, what's meant to be is gonna, gonna be. So, you know, just keep working hard. And to Tiger Nation, like I said, man, I can't even, I can't even put it into words like how grateful we are for the support. And we're going to go out there tomorrow. We're going to leave it all on the field, grateful for this opportunity, and we're going to represent for Jack State. There it is. Yes, sir. Tiger Nation, once again, we're down here in the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana, for the 2024 HBCU Legacy Bowl. Of course, we got tight end legend, <laughs> DJ Stevens, uh, here sitting down with us. and. Um, this is not it, man. I, I, I don't want to do the what's next, but I will say this. Uh, we got Pro Day coming up. Uh, we got a few more opportunities to sit down with DJ, and uh, we'll definitely uh, keep up with what's going on and what's next, and uh, we'll go from there. So, as always, make sure you, if you're following us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, even join the channel. And we appreciate you guys for always for the support. As always, it's D.I. Love. Go Tigers, baby.